On January 4th, just after 9 in the evening, around 50 cadets were doing routine drills at a military academy in the Libyan capital, Tripoli. The last thing they heard was an order to turn and march. A second later, CCTV captured an explosion that detonated in the center of the group and left 26 young men dead or dying on the parade ground. Many were still teenagers. None of them were armed. Seven months later, no one has claimed responsibility for this attack. And some believe that because these recruits were not strictly civilians, their deaths are not worth investigating. But the BBC has been looking into the strike that killed these young men and at the shrapnel that was left on the parade ground. This matters because in this box are clues that tell us not only what hit the cadets, but who was behind this attack. And how major world powers are secretly fueling a war that has brought misery to Libya's people. One of those who witnessed the attack was 20-year-old Abdel Mu'in, a student at the academy and a friend of those who died. CCTV captured Abdel Mu'in as he walked out of the academy into a scene of carnage. The students, says Abdel Mu'in, had come from towns and villages across Libya. Now he wants to know who was responsible for the death of his friends. The BBC has now uncovered enough evidence to answer Abdel Mu'in's question. The academy sits in the south of Tripoli, the base for Libya's UN-recognized Government of National Accord, or GNA. At the time of the attack, Tripoli was under siege from the Libyan National Army, or LNA, which fights for a rival government based in the eastern cities of Benghazi and Tobruk. These two sides, both heavily backed by foreign powers, have been fighting for control of the country since 2014, and the LNA is usually quick to take credit for its military triumphs. But on January 5th, the LNA explicitly denied that its forces had killed these cadets. The LNA's explanation was that these young men had been killed by local shelling or perhaps by an attack from inside the academy. We're going to show you that this is not true. And we're going to start with the box of shrapnel. This video, posted on January 5th, shows someone collecting fragments of metal from the parade ground. Images filmed by the BBC show the same shrapnel laid out on a table, and there's enough information here for us to piece together this weapon. These fins. These bolt mechanisms and this connection system. All match the components of a missile called the Blue Arrow 7. 
The Blue Arrow 7 is a Chinese-made air-to-surface missile. Our analysis found only one aircraft active in the attack on Tripoli that is capable of firing this weapon, a drone called the Wing Lung. Just three weeks before this strike, the UN concluded that the Blue Arrow 7 is ballistically paired to be delivered by the Wing Lung 2 and by no other aviation asset identified in Libya to date. The Wing Lung is China's equivalent of the US Predator drone. But while the export of US drones is regulated, China, according to one US official, has been selling the hell out of its drones. So who is buying the Wing Lung? And who is flying it over Libya? Over the past year, the fighting in Libya's streets has been matched by an escalating drone war in its skies. Ghassan Salameh, the former head of the UN mission in Libya, described this as possibly the largest drone war theater now in the world. Both the GNA and the LNA use small, phone-operated drones for reconnaissance and propaganda. This video shows three Russian mercenaries flying a handheld drone in support of their LNA allies. And this sequence shows a GNA allied militia using a similar drone to direct an artillery strike. More sophisticated are the Russian-made Orlan 10s used by the LNA, drones that carry thermal imaging cameras that can pinpoint military targets and even jam mobile phone signals. Then there are the attack drones. This is a Turkish-made Bayraktar TB2, which has been used in support of the GNA since 2019. The Bayraktar can cover 150 kilometers, carry a payload of laser-guided missiles and, invisible at an altitude of 24,000 feet, loiter over its targets for 24 hours. But even that is nothing compared to the Wing Lung 2, an unmanned aircraft that can travel some 1,500 kilometers, fire up to 12 missiles, and still return to base. From early 2019, these drones were used to support the LNA's attack on Tripoli, a year-long siege that brought misery to the city's civilian population and contributed to the displacement of 149,000 people. The Wing Lung was the only drone operating over Tripoli in January 2020 that could have fired a Blue Arrow 7 into the cadets. So where did it come from? These are all the known Libyan air bases within striking range of the academy. But Wing Lung drones have only ever been documented at two of these bases, Al Jufra and Al Khadim. Let's look at Al Jufra first. Satellite images show us that Wing Lungs were operating from this base in August 2019. But by September, the drones had vanished from Al Jufra, perhaps in response to an attack on the base earlier that summer, which left these planes blazing on the tarmac. They have never reappeared and were not flying from this base at the time of the strike on the academy. That leaves us with Al Khadim. The base has been here for decades, but since the fall of Libya's former leader, Muammar al-Gaddafi, in 2011, al-Khadim has changed. Starting in 2014, satellite imagery shows a major redevelopment of this base. So who's paying for all this construction? Where have these aircrafts come from? Which foreign power is backing the LNA's drone war on Tripoli? These details give us a clue. This is the first version of the Wing Lung drone, visible at Al Khadim in 2016. This is a UH-60 helicopter, what the Americans call a Black Hawk. These are AT-802 air tractors. And this looks like a Hawk air defense system. When this image was taken, there was only one foreign player active in this war that owned all four of these weapons, the United Arab Emirates. We also found an arms registry that lists the weapons bought by the UAE in 2017. It records the purchase of 15 Wing Lung 2 drones 
and 350 Blue Arrow 7 missiles. The UAE has previously denied military involvement in Libya and claims to support the UN peace process. But the country's crown prince, Mohammed bin Zayed, is sympathetic to the LNA's leader, Khalifa Haftar. And in 2019, the UN found that by sending wing loom drones and Blue Arrow 7 missiles into Libya, the UAE had violated the UN arms embargo, which exists to bring an end to this conflict and which has been in force since 2011. The same embargo that the UAE endorsed at a summit in Berlin in January 2020. Here, along with other world powers, the UAE agreed to refrain from intervention in Libya's war. Three months later, the UAE's Minister of State for Foreign Affairs, Dr. Anwar Gargash, was still tweeting his support for the UN's peace efforts. But in the months leading up to the Berlin meeting, the wing loom drones were taking off from this runway. And all the evidence suggests that among them was the drone which on January 4th fired a missile into the unarmed cadets in Tripoli. We have shown you the evidence of what hit these cadets, where it came from, and which foreign power operates from this base. But in early February 2020, the wing lungs vanished from Al Khadim. And when we began looking into where they'd gone, we found clues to the involvement of another shadow player in the game of drones. This is a Chinese TV report from 2012 that shows the command center required to fly wing loom drones. We located the exact place in China where this video was filmed and found satellite imagery taken in the same week it was shot. This gives us a precise picture of what a wing loom command center looks like from the air. The presenter describes this building as the satellite data link center and this as the drone's control room. If we look closely at images from Al Khadim, we can see buildings which exactly match the dimensions of both the control room and the data link center that connects the pilots to the drones via satellite. The satellite dish gives this building a distinctive profile a profile we can see in the imagery from Al Khadim. We can also see these boxes, which look like shipping containers. What are they? This video gives us a clue. It's a Chinese promotional film showing how a Wing Lung 2 is packed and transported. The wings are laid lengthways along the body of the aircraft. And the boxes visible at Al Khadim are exactly the right size to accommodate the flat packed drone. On January 31st, 11 of these wing loom containers were visible at Al Khadim. But at some point in the first week of February, they disappeared from the base. At exactly the same time, between February 4th and February 7th, an identical configuration of containers appeared at an airbase near Siwa over the border in Egypt. This is what vanished from Al Khadim. And this is what appeared at Siwa. 11 boxes, identical in size and color. The same control rooms and the same satellite data link centers. The drones now stationed at Siwa appear to be the same UAE drones that were previously stationed at Al Khadim, safe in the Egyptian desert but still within striking range of Libya's capital, Tripoli. And this is not the only evidence of Egypt's involvement in the Libyan war. The BBC has found new evidence that another Egyptian airbase, Sidi Barrani, less than 80 kilometers from the Libyan border, is the destination for military aircraft sent by the UAE. These are Mirage 2000 fighter jets. They're painted in colors that are not used by Egypt's Air Force, but they exactly match the jets flown by the UAE. This is the same model of plane implicated by the UN in the bombing of a migrant center east of Tripoli in July 2019, in which 53 people were killed. 
Satellite imagery also reveals the presence of a cargo plane called the Ilyushin 76. We see these planes on the tarmac at Sidi Barrani again and again, in March, in April, and in June. So what are they doing at a military airbase, and where might they have come from? Flight tracking data offers a clue. This is flight ZAV-9511, also an illusion, recorded by radar as it came into land at Sidi Barrani on June 25th. If we track this flight back, we find that it came from the UAE. And it's not the only illusion to have made this trip. We tracked multiple flights by Aleutians that head out of the UAE towards northwestern Egypt. In almost every case, these planes vanish from the radar just west of the Nile, still at cruising speed and altitude. We know that some of these planes landed at Sidi Barrani because, in at least three cases, the radar records the Aleutians as they leave this airbase and head back towards the east. We don't know what was in these planes, but these flights suggest an air bridge for equipment or supplies between the UAE and an Egyptian military base on the Libyan border. Egypt's president, Abdel Fattah al-Sisi, was also present in Berlin, shaking Angela Merkel's hand and endorsing the UN's efforts to de-escalate the Libyan war. Six months later, he was here at Sidi Barrani, telling Egypt's troops to be prepared for action both inside Egypt's borders and beyond. We put these findings to the government of the UAE. They did not respond. We also requested a response from Egypt. They too did not reply. The cadets who died in Tripoli in January were not killed by a short-range mortar shell or by an attack from inside the academy. They were victims of a sophisticated computer game war which the United Nations has been powerless to stop. Just a few days after this attack, the former head of the UN mission in Libya, Ghassan Salami, made his exasperation plain. Take your hands out of Libya. The country is suffering too much from foreign interference in different ways. Libya is not only an oil story. Libya is not only a gas story. Libya is not only a geopolitical story. It is also a human story. And people are suffering. When Gaddafi was toppled in 2011, the cadets who died here were just 10 or 11 years old and might have expected to grow up in a country with some measure of peace and freedom. Instead, they died in a conflict that has now been grinding on for almost a decade. And the evidence says they were killed by a Chinese-made missile, fired from a drone that took off 750 kilometers away in a base operated by a foreign power. <laughs>